Welcome to the next uh, talk. Uh, this is uh, Rui Barbosa. I expect I am pronouncing it uh, well. Uh, with a partial Boolean algebra and the logical exclusivity principle. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, thank you, uh, first of all, to the organizers for putting this uh, enormous amount of And it's a pleasure to be participating in this uh, um, in this edition of KPL. So, uh, so what I'm going to talk about today is some joint work with uh, with Samson um, on uh, on partial Boolean algebra and logical exclusivity principle. And just as a way of motivating, uh, let's just start with the title of the conference: Quantum Physics and Logic. And I think everyone would be probably familiar with traditional quantum logic by Birkhoff, beginnings of quantum mechanics. Uh, where the projectors on a Hilbert space, so P of H, uh, the lattice of projectors of the Hilbert space, are so these projectors are interpreted as, as propositions about a quantum system. So, but as a logic, this is very strange. Uh, for example, we all know that distributivity, the distributive law, uh, fails. Uh, but also, there's kind of an issue with the operational meaning of these uh, operations. So, where is doing a measurement to check whether a particular system is in, in a state that satisfies P or doesn't satisfy P, what is the operational meaning of testing P and Q together when they are two, uh, when, when they are two projectors that do not commute and therefore two measurements that cannot be performed uh, simultaneously? Um, a, a kind of solution to that, so in, 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 in their seminal work on the notion of partial Boolean algebras, uh, which are uh, sort of versions of these where, where which only admit the physically meaningful operations. So we'll only have, uh, we can only speak of P and Q when P and Q are compatible or commute. Uh, in fact, uh, some recent work by Koshin uh, is de develops a, a large part of foundations of quantum theory uh, within the framework of partial Boolean algebras and uh, that and other work also motivated us to look at this um, again. So what are partial Boolean algebras? So just to give an overview of the talk, I'm going to speak about partial Boolean algebras. I'm going to uh, talk about uh, our kind of our main technical uh, result, which has to do with free extensions uh, of, of the commensurability relations. So add adding some more um, commensurability relations freely to a particular partial Boolean algebra. And, uh, and then um, we'll topics to speak about contextuality, uh, exclusivity principles, and also the tensor product. Um, so just to start uh, with uh, partial Boolean algebra, so let's start with something that's familiar to everyone, Boolean algebra. So we have, so it's a structure that has a set, and then it has two constants, zero and one, a unary not operation, and two binary operations, meet and join, or and and or, or and. And, um, and they satisfy the usual act. So an example, of course, is the uh, the power set of a set together with uh, um, with a well complement um, uh, union and intersection, and in particular the partial the the, the Boolean algebra two, which has two elements, just the constant zero and one, uh, will uh, play a particularly important role um, in in what follows. So a partial Boolean algebra is sort of a, a, a variation on this uh, where we are not compatible with each other. So we add to this a reflexive symmetric binary relation, uh, the commensurability relation on A, and then while uh, the- Ruby. Hello, yes? Hi, yeah, really sorry to interrupt. Um, is there any way you could possibly disable your video? I think the uh, connection is possibly not so great on your end. Uh, sure, how do I do this? Uh, so yeah, if you come out of the screen share, you should come back to the normal Cisco meeting. And then there should be an opportunity to turn your video off. Awesome. Yeah, let's give that a go, see how it goes. Thanks very much. Sorry about that. Um, uh, so I was saying, um, right, so the, 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 the complement operation uh, remains a, uh, a total operation, but now the binary operations meet and join are just partial. So the only... Um, and the condition that these have to satisfy um, is that if you take any set of, pe of pairwise commensurable elements, 
uh, of these uh, partial Boolean algebra, then this is contained in a larger set, possibly larger set of also pairwise commensurable elements, which does form a Boolean algebra under the restriction of, of these operations. And by a Boolean algebra, I mean a total Boolean algebra, a usual Boolean algebra. Um, Objectives on a Hilbert space, but now where we see them not as a an automodal lattice, but just as a partial Boolean algebra. So we only we we the product of projectors is only a partial operation that's defined on commuting projectors, and similarly for the uh, for the joint projectors. Uh, so there's a natural notion of morphisms between partial Boolean algebras. There's just maps that preserve commensurability and the operations whenever they're defined, and this gives a category uh, which we call PBA, and this is. Uh, in their paper, non commutativity is co limit, where they showed this interesting result that every partial Boolean algebra is the co limit in, uh, in this category P of, P, B of A of its Boolean subalgebra. So it's completely determined by its Boolean subalgebras and, and the way they're, uh, they're uh, included into each other. So it's the co limit of the diagram of its Boolean subalgebras with inclusions. Um, so, what are the co limits in P, B of A? So the so this is also shown in their paper, and they just disjoint union of these two algebras, and they just identify identified as the constant zero and the constant one on both of them. And there's no no other commensurabilities holding, and therefore there's no, no more operations need to be defined. Uh, Co-equalizers and general co-limits, however, are also shown to exist by Chris and uh, Benno, uh, but they they appeal they make an appeal to the uh, to the adjoint functor theorem to. Something that comes out of our work is sort of a direct construction, sort of uh, generators and relations uh, kind of um, fashion of 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 uh, of, uh, uh, of co-limits. And more generally, uh, this is sort of the the main uh, sort of technical development that uh, we'll we'll now focus on, which is the idea. So, if I'm given a partial Boolean algebra and I'm given some sort of relation between its elements, then can we freely extend this partial Boolean algebra so that this So this is the theorem. So if you have, you give it a partial Boolean algebra and some binary relation, and then there's going to be a new partial Boolean algebra such that there is a morphism from the original Boolean algebra A to this extended Boolean algebra, which satisfies that uh, any time A and B uh, were related by this extra relation, then the images will be commensurable in the in the extended Boolean algebra. Universal as, as such morphism. So for any other partial Boolean algebra B and any morphism from A to B that satisfies the same property, there's a unique map uh, from the extension to B such that this diagram commutes. Uh, so th these, these theorems, as I said, is sort of proven in a more constructive fashion and just appealing to, to the existence of goal limits. And, um, and the, uh, the way inductive system of proof rules uh, over a set of syntactic generated terms that are, that are syntactically generated from A. So the idea is we have these generators, I of A, uh, which are the elements of the, of the uh, original partial Boolean algebra A, and, uh, and we close these under Boolean operations and constants, and now we define inductively a predicate that says whether one of these preterms is defined, a binary relation indicating whether they're commensurable, and an equivalence relation. I'll give the rules in the next slide. But then we'll define the terms to, of the, of, to be just those preterms which for which we can actually derive that they are defined, and the and the partial Boolean algebra will just be uh, the quotient of these terms by this equivalence relation. And so maybe I don't have much time to go through this uh, inductive construction, but the idea. Uh, so I'll just display the rules here, uh, and they're kind of um, and they're they're relatively. Uh, intuitive, but the idea is that we include the partial Boolean algebra A and all its structure, and then we force, this is sort of the second rule in the first line, um, sorry, the, the third rule in the first line, we force the, the things that are related by this uh, uh, new relation, uh, this circled uh, circle, uh, to also to be actually commensurable in the, uh, in the, in the resulting partial Boolean algebra. Uh, and then we have to take a lot of care to, to the actual equivalence relation, etc. Um, but we, we can discuss it on the on the comments later on. Um, so there's also let me just mention that there's variation of this construction where we require that two elements that are related by this uh, extra relation are not just commensurable in the extended uh, partial Boolean algebra, but they're actually uh, supposed to be equal. And uh, this is a way. This gives us a way to construct co-equalizers explicitly, and therefore 
uh, general code limited. Going to contextuality. So the original uh, formulation of contextuality by Koshin and Specker is that there is no embedding of the partial Boolean algebra of projectors uh, on a Hilbert space of dimension at least three into a Boolean algebra. In fact, they considered several forms of non-contextuality for a given partial Boolean algebra. Uh, one of them is indeed that this could be embedded in an actual Boolean algebra. And the, the last one, so I'm just uh, focusing on the first and the, uh, there is a homomorphism uh, into, into some Boolean algebra, not necessarily an embedding. And in fact, while the first condition is equivalent to saying that there are, uh, uh, so given that there's always a homomorphism from B to the, to the uh, two element Boolean algebra, uh, we can sort of uh, translate these conditions, these two conditions into the following. So the first one is that there are enough I, uh, homomorphisms into two that separate elements of A, and the simply is at least one homomorphism into two. And therefore, what, uh, what Koch and Specker actually proved is the strongest property of contextuality, that there's not even one homomorphism into the two element Boolean algebra. And in fact, for those in the know, you can note the analogy between strong and logical contextuality here. So there's, there's kind of an apparent contradiction here uh, in that BA is a full subcategory of, of uh, PBA, and we have th that any partial Boolean algebra of its, of its Boolean subalgebras. Uh, but we could take this co-limit in the category of Boolean algebras itself of the same diagram, and we'd note that the cone from this diagram to B is also a cone in partial Boolean algebras. And therefore, there would be a map, uh, a PBA morphism from A into this Boolean algebra B. Uh, so what the trick here is that uh, uh, in, in, the, in the category of Boolean algebras, there's also these trivial Boolean algebra with some to be complete and co-complete. Uh, we have to include it so that BA is an equational variety over sets. And in this trivial Boolean algebra, zero is equal to one. So this, this Boolean algebra is kind of a contradict, uh, this sort of uh, captures a, a contradiction where, where false is equal to true and is the only Boolean algebra that does not have a homomorphism into two. And so what it says is that if we have a partial Boolean algebra with no homomorphism into two, i.e. the quotient spectrum, Boolean subalgebras must be this contradiction. So we could say that this diagram is implicitly contradictory, and when we try to combine all this information in the co-limit, we obtain this uh, contradictory Boolean algebra one. So this kind of fits well with the slogan of contextuality as locally consistent but globally inconsistent. Uh, so in fact, uh, so that these two things are indeed equivalent. So uh, partial Boolean algebra has no morphism into two if and only if uh, the co-limit of its and we can actually phrase this in terms of these extensions by saying that if we try to extend freely the Boolean algebra by forcing every element to be compatible, then we 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 reach these uh, we get these uh, uh, contradictory Boolean algebra, trivial Boolean algebra one. Uh, so this, an advantage of partial Boolean algebra is that the, the cushion specter property provides this intrinsic logical approach to define uh, state independent contextuality. But where do states come? of a partial Boolean algebra. And the idea is that there are maps from elements to assign probabilities to every event on this partial Boolean algebra. And uh, essentially, they can be characterized as those, uh, those maps uh, such that the restriction to any Boolean subalgebra is a finitely additive probability measure. And, uh, and then we can define the state to be probabilistic non-contextual if, uh, if it extends to these with partial Boolean algebra, we force everything to be commensurable. Um, right, so uh, let's just keep that. Uh, and there's, uh, yes, I think I don't, I don't have much time to to uh, uh, dwell on this, but uh, the connection with this sort of uh, other uh, approaches to contextuality, like the sheep theoretic or the graph theoretic approach, um, is sort of uh, explained um, in in our paper in the preprint that you can see in. The, The idea is that from a, for a measurement scenario, you can construct a Boolean algebra, and then states will correspond to no signaling or no disturbance empirical models, and the sort of corresponding formulations of probabilistic, logical, and strong contextuality. So exclusivity principles. So no, uh, as I was saying, no disturbance or no signaling ensures that the probabilistic outcome of a compatible subset of measurements is independent of which other compatible measurements are performed together with it. And uh, this is always satisfied by the probability 
quantum realizability. For example, the PR box is no signaling, but it's not quantum realizable. So a lot of effort has been dedicated to, to uh, characterizing uh, the set of quantum behaviors by imposing additionally uh, physically motivated conditions. And one of those, uh, one of them are, are sort of several variations on exclusivity principles. And we're going to consider two exclusivity principles for, for uh, partial Boolean algebras, one at a logical level, applying to elements, level which applies to states. So the basic notion is a notion of exclusive events. Um, so, so two elements are said to be exclusive, uh, A per B, if there is a third element C such that um, you can read it as A implies C, so we, A is less than C and B implies not C. Um, and where this less than is defined in the usual way, so A and, A and, A and C would have to be um, is A. So note that this is weaker than requiring that just the meet of A and B is zero. But the two things would be equivalent in a Boolean algebra. But in general, in a partial Boolean algebra, there could be exclusive events that are not commensurable and for which, therefore, the meet is not even defined, let alone being zero. Uh, so, so let and pep. Uh, so now a partial Boolean algebra will be said to satisfy the logical exclusivity principle. Are also commensurable. And we can uh, we, we write EPBA for the full subcategory uh, of partial of exclusive uh, logically exclusive partial Boolean algebras. Uh, now, for probabilistic exclusivity, so this applies to a state in a partial Boolean algebra is considered logically exclusive if any set of pairwise exclusive events has probabilities summing up to less than one. And note that this is something that would uh, be uh, would hold. So let versus pep. Uh, so it's immediate to see that if a partial Boolean algebra satisfies the logical exclusivity principle, then any state will satisfy this uh, probabilistic exclusivity principle. Uh, but in general, in a, in a general partial Boolean algebra, not all states will satisfy this uh, partial exclusivity principle. And the one example is sort of two tens a tensor product of two PR boxes. Uh, but we can construct a new partial Boolean algebra A. So given the partial Boolean states uh, correspond to the states of the original partial Boolean algebra that satisfy PEP, or the, who states yield states of the original partial Boolean algebra that satisfy PEP. And the way to do this is just by extending the algebra A with extra commensurability relations given by this uh, perp, this, we're talking about this exclusivity condition. Uh, however, it's not clear that this necessarily satisfies the logical exclusive principle. So the principle will be forced on the image but it may have failed to hold for other elements in this extension. Uh, but we can freely generate uh, from any partial Boolean algebra, we can actually freely generate a new partial Boolean algebra that satisfies LEP. And, uh, uh, and the, the sort of analogous to the way you can sort of compactify a topological space, for example. And this sort of uh, shows these, uh, the category of uh, logically exclusive partial Boolean algebra as the reflective subcategory of PBA. So concretely, what does that mean? any partial Boolean algebra, we can associate a partial Boolean algebra X of A, which satisfies LEP, and there's a morphism from A into, uh, into X of A, and, and in fact, this is universal uh, um, as such. So if, if for any other partial Boolean algebra that satisfies, so any, any other morphism into a partial Boolean algebra that satisfies LEP will factor via uh, this extension X of A. And early construction where we add uh, uh, an extra inductive rule to the system and these sort of forces. Uh, we can't just do it in one step, but this, if we include this rule into the, into the inductive system, then we can show this result. So just to, for the last, uh, uh, the last section of the talks about tensor products of partial Boolean algebras, and um, indeed uh, uh, the paper by Heunen and Vandenberg uh, showed uh, that uh, which is given by uh, the following uh, tensor. So the idea is that you just take uh, that, uh, if, if you think of it in terms of the diagram of Boolean subalgebras, we just take the co-products of Boolean subalgebras, one from A and one from B, and then we take the co-limit of the whole thing. And, uh, but if you look at this, it's not constructed explicitly. It relies on the existence of co-limits. And this is, as I said, was proven by the adjunct factor theorem, but we can actually use our construct um, uh, of this tensor product. And the idea is that we just take the tensor product to be the co-product of A and B, for which we have an explicit construction, and then we extend it by forcing 
uh, these extra commensurability relations between any element that comes from A and any element that comes from B. However, uh, so as, as Chris and Benno showed in their paper, there is a lax monoidal functor that takes a Hilbert, that sort of the functor that takes algebra of projectors is lax monoidal. And in particular, there is sort of, uh, what that means is that there is an embedding for P, P of H tensor P of K into the, the projectors of the, of the Hilbert space tensor product H tensor K. However, this is far from being subjective. And you can see that by just taking C2 and noting that there are many homomorphisms uh, from uh, uh, the partial Boolean algebra corresponding to, to C2 into uh, Boolean algebra. And these would lift to homomorphism from, uh, from the tensor product of two copies of uh, PC2 into, into uh, the two element Boolean algebra. But the quotient specter theorem says that there is no such homomorphism for P of C4, which is uh, the projectors of uh, C2 tensor C2. So therefore, uh, so indeed, this is one of the key points where non-classicality emerges, is the passage from, uh, from this, if you like. Um, anyway, so, uh, uh, so maybe I'll just skip this and I'll say that, it, so this result, uh, so the, um, uh, I mean, this sort of poses a challenge of finding a stronger notion of tensor product that can actually track the, the Hilbert space of tensor product more uh, closely. Um, and indeed, um, it's, uh, it's necessary is that in, when, when we construct these, uh, these uh, first tensor products by the inductive rules, we note that if, if a particular term is defined, if you can derive that a particular term is defined, then any subterm will also be defined. And this is too strong to capture the full logic of the Hilbert space tensor product. In fact, if you take two projectors, P1 tensor P2 and Q1 tensor Q2, you can show that they're orthogonal by just showing that either P1 is orthogonal to Q1 or P2 is orthogonal to Q2. Uh, that, that P1 tensor P2 and Q1 tensor Q2 are commensurable, even though, let's say, for example, P2 and Q2 are not commensurable. Um, and indeed, this idea that propositions can be defined on quantum systems, even though the sub-expressions cannot be, uh, is actually emphasized by, by, by Koshin in, uh, in its recent uh, developments. Um, so this leads to define forces logical exclusivity to hold, um, and uh, it goes as follows. So this is just a composite tensor product with his uh, with his reflection into the the into EPBA, so the category of partial Boolean algebras that satisfy LEP. Uh, so uh, uh, this this new A tensor B is just the old A tensor B. But now you extend, you, you, you reflect it into, you make it into a logically exclusive partial Boolean algebra. More precisely, it's still a lax monoidal functor, uh, but it remains, um, it remains to see how close it gets to the, to the full Hilbert space tensor product. And in fact, there's kind of a limitative result in this direction, um, which has to do with the following questions. So if you see the way we, we sort of went from one tensor product to the other, just by extending it. Uh, by extending commensurability, uh, by do, can doing such an extension can uh, doing such an extension uh, induce the KS property in this extended partial Boolean algebra, and it did not hold in the original one. And in fact, we showed that this is not uh, possible. So A will be quotient specker if and only if the extension of A by any commensurability relation is also quotient specker. So in fact. Um, so in particular, if A and B are not quotient specker, then neither is the, uh, with sort of logical exclusivity iterated k times. And, in, and so under the conjecture that this coincide, that uh, sort of the reflection into logical exclusivity coincides with iterating, uh, iterating this construction that adds logical exclusivity events as commensurable to a fixed point, this would show that our logical exclusivity tensor product is still not enough to capture, uh, to capture the quantum case, so to, to capture the uh, the Hilbert space tensor product. Uh, so I think I'm uh, happy to answer any questions. Okay, this is uh, the louder I, I can do the clap. Uh, but everyone is clapping in the Slack. So I uh, I have one question in the Slack, uh, which uh, happened at the slide 13 uh, from Robert uh, Furber. 
Uh, I, I, I don't know if you can come back to the slide 13. Yeah, can you see the slides? Yeah, 13. Yes, I, I can see the slides. So the, in the 13, he asked, uh, well, it, it's, it's more a comment. He said, one, in the Lindenbaum algebra, uh, it, sorry, one is the Lindenbaum algebra of an inconsistent theory. It's, it's just a comment, uh, but I don't know. Is the okay? I'm so not sure if yes. <laughs> that, 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 I mean, that's that's sort of what is. So yes, I, I, I'm not sure if it is uh, an answer. Okay, there is time for uh, one uh, more short question, and there are other questions that you can answer later in, in the Slack. Uh, so the next question is uh, Shivani. Uh, De Felice, he asks, uh, are there partial Boolean algebras that are not realized as uh, P of, of H uh, for some Hilbert space H? Yes, is a short answer. And uh, uh, I, th I think the... <laughs> I think sort of the, uh, the, the the kind of thing I was saying towards the end about uh, about tensor products could give such an example, right? So this tensor of two uh, p of c two uh, is is not p of h for any Hilbert space. Uh, in particular, is not p of uh, c four. Okay. I see. Okay. Um, there is another mm -hmm. question, but maybe you should answer it in the Slack because uh, we run out of time. Uh, so I, I propose to thank you again in the Slack. I'm here. I, I will just laugh. So thank you for your talk, you. and uh, you can continue uh, answering the questions in the in the Slack. Bye. Bye. Thank you. I'm not sure how to disconnect from this.